But Jim, speaking of death before dishonor, what else did you watch on the pay-per-view event? Well, of course, since I was going to watch it live, but that didn't work out, now I'm kind of glad because, again, four hours. And I've been responsible for formatting a, a few Ring of Honor pay-per-views, and they were all about three hours, as I recall. I think one went three and a half because we couldn't get the guys out of the ring. So I had to be judicious. But two other things that I was looking forward to was seeing Claudio and Lethal and Samoa Joe. And the the Claudio match, whew, that made more headlines outside the ring than it did inside the ring. Uh, with Claudio and Jonathan Gresham for the Ring of Honor title, should we talk about the match first? Well, let's talk about the match first, and then we will talk about what happened before and apparently afterwards. So the match itself was on first on the pay-per-view. And the commentators explained it quite adequately to where nobody looked bad by saying it's a double main event, Ring of Honor title, Ring of Honor uh, tag team title. There was a coin flip to determine which went first, which went last, and this is the order. So I didn't make anybody look bad there that the world title match was on first. It was a plausible explanation. However, once the match started, we will understand even more the backstage strife and drama. Let's face it. Jonathan Gresham being the Ring of Honor world champion at five, somebody said five four, and I'm wondering if that's generous. With very little physical charisma, facial expressions, magnetism, whatever, he's a great technical wrestler. There's definitely a spot on the card for him. I'm not saying fire the fucking guy. He took care of that anyway. But the world champion of any wrestling organization of any kind, of any size? No. Just visually. As I've said before, there's a reason why that I didn't get cast in Hollywood to play all of Brad Pitt's parts, because I don't fucking look like Brad Pitt. And, you know, when you think of, he's an athlete, obviously, and he was very good in some a aspects of the technical wrestling we saw, Tony Charles. A hell of a fucking hand, hell of a worker, hell of a hell of a wrestler, technical wrestler. He was five foot six, in great physical condition, but he wasn't going to draw you any money. He was great to have on the card because he made the business look credible. Every once in a while, they would try to use him. Remember, I think it was Gary Hart in in Dallas, put him a mask on him and made him checkmate because he could counter anybody's wrestling move. But Gresham is, he's, he can be a submission guy where he can sell a lot and capitalize on mistakes. But he was standing there toe to toe with a guy over a foot taller than him and probably at least 50 pounds heavier. I don't know. But Claudio has the size, the look, the work, the talent, the experience around the world at a high level. Gresham has. Talent, but none of those other things. And I think Claudio can still be pushed at a high level with this audience because they want to like him to begin with just because he's been mistreated across the road. So they were into Claudio. The fans were on the entrance. They, Gresham was like, eh. And also Gresham came out with job face on, as we saw, and... It wasn't where it is gimmick he usually wears, and his new manager, Prince Nana, followed him out about three or four minutes later and just wandered to ringside. But this match was, it looked visually ridiculous. And Claudio does a good job because of his experience of making it look legitimate that he didn't beat this guy in two minutes, but he wasn't going all out to beat him. He was making it plausible that he wasn't going all out to just decimate this guy at first. Then Gresham started trying to pick him apart, and he could sell that. But it wasn't, you know, Claudio knows kind of how to work with a guy based on not only the level he's been presented at, but honestly the level that he appears to be at. 
At one point, Gresham got an Indian death lock on him, but when he tried to spin up on top, his legs were too short to keep it. He lost it. And obviously, because of, as we'll talk about in a minute, Gresham was not motivated here to give him something that they couldn't follow on the rest of the card because I believe he already knew the shit had hit the fan. But this match got old after six minutes because Gresham just, he doesn't have the the physical charisma and it was, everybody could call this, everybody could see it based on the the size difference, the star power difference, just the difference. And at one point, I think you mentioned that you saw this, Claudio was kind of bending over so Gresham could hit those shitty chops, but why can't he chop? What was the matter with those chops? He was just thunking. He was just... He was, uh, so, anyway, at one point, Gresham did a not, wonderful German suplex and a bridge right up on his tippy toes. Gotch would have been proud. But then finally, Claudio used some Moxley elbows that were better than Moxley's, but still looked worse than anything else he did in the match, and then hit the sit-out powerbomb, one, two, three, new Ring of Honor world champion, Claudio Castagnoli, no surprises. So that was the match, and that was what it was, and the people were happy Claudio won. I don't think the people were happy they watched the match. What do you think? I wasn't terribly into the match. There was a big size difference. I kind of figured what the result would be, especially with them opening the show with it. It was all right for what it was. I can't really say too much more than what you said. (laughs) 